so I'm going to transform the bathroom. Per me il bagno è sempre stato un rifugio, uno spazio di serenità, intimità, tempo sospeso per sognare. Maybe in the outside world you have to be all these different things to different people in your life, but in here there is sensuality and peace and freedom to be completely yourself, naked, natural, honest, away from calls and screens and judgment. I soak in a bath, I wash away my tears, my fatigue, the dirt of the day, dopo una lunga giornata fuori nel mondo caotico. Or when I wake, I prepare myself with compassion and optimism, ready to start a new day by reflecting on everything for which I'm grateful, this healthy, vital body, the softness of femininity, the luxury of a little private moment to nourish and clean the mind. Of course, when one moves in with a bachelor, sometimes he hasn't yet considered the bathroom could be this kind of oasis. But after seeing how I renovated his kitchen, he asked me to work the same magic on the bathroom and breathe some sensuality into it. As ever, I am doing it on a budget, but as those of you who have watched this channel for years know, what I lack in funds, I can always make up for in patience and a high tolerance and passion for tedious, old-fashioned manual labor. So here is what I'm working with. A very small space, uh, Ikea shelves, a little trolley that was filled with bathroom products he never uses, uh, a bath that is kind of a mess with tubes and bottles because there's nowhere to put them, towel hooks on the back of the door that never really work as the towels always end up falling on the ground, uh, a mirror and cabinet that is functional but not very beautiful and seeing as it's a small space, the bigger the mirror the better I think. An off-white plastic toilet system which doesn't seem important but you know when it's in the corner of your eye every day these things can change your mood, I believe. Uh, a lovely sink and bathtub, nice tiles but nothing that makes one want to soak in a bath with a lover by candlelight on a cold winter's evening. And so the hunt began for little pieces to make this rather modern, boring bathroom feel a little more rustic and cosy to match the rest of the house. In Italy, this kind of hunt is so much fun. After looking in my usual second-hand warehouse, Guido told me about a little hidden place where almost no one goes, and they don't sell on consignment, so you can even negotiate on price. After looking at many beautiful vintage mirrors, I found this one for six euro or seven or eight dollars. I don't really like how gold it is, but I'm sure I can send that back a bit. I ended up finding an overhead light online and it's brass, so I want to bring this muted sort of golden color through as a little theme. So the straw lampshade that currently exists in the bathroom isn't so bad, but when I saw this beautiful light, it just needed rewiring, I fell in love and it will carry through the brass tone and give the bathroom a little elevated elegance. I think women with our makeup can tend to make bathrooms look very messy, so I found this beautiful little wooden box to keep things neat, uh, to keep store my makeup in for only four euro. And then I saw this fellow. I love this shade of green. Guido loves uh, this green too. And instead of the little stool where we drop our clothes uh, or I sit sometimes and chat to Guido when he's in the bath, I thought this uh, little stool would be so much prettier. It needs to be completely repaired underneath, but 
I could do that, couldn't I? Uh, I took it into Florence one rainy day and asked around uh, two of the artisans who do upholstery had closed years ago. E va riparata. Qui 50 euro costa. 50? Sì, sfarlo e rifarlo. The one guy still open said it would cost 50 euro and it would take two weeks, which is well over my budget and my time limit, so I decided to try reupholstering it myself. webbing which was quite cheap and and um, I didn't know what it was called in, uh, in Italian and then I, I learned that it's called fetuccia like fettuccine like the pasta because like the long strips of pasta and it's very robust it took us a long time to find this sort of um, straw or, or I don't know the stuffing to put inside which is uh, not uh, easy to come by but again very cheap but we just found an old gentleman who sold us a bag for like a two euro. And then I have my little nails. Uh, I'm going to need to carefully take out the um, staples. And then what is underneath it? Oh look, so much. And then usually there's a piece of fabric. It's a little, oh my gosh, look at that. It's just tiniest it's just worn away i'm gonna sew a little pillowcase for the new stuffing and then um and then it will have that fabric which will um sort of protect it so it doesn't come through on the other side just put the new light in and a little bit of a hole there, <laughs> uh, which is going to be covered by the mirror and here I am about to waste a lot of money on paint. When I did the kitchen, I went to a professional paint store, but this time we went to the Italian equivalent of sort of Home Depot store. And I assumed that, you know, if they make paint that isn't cheap and says it's for floors and tiles and is calpestabile and waterproof, that it would work. Little did I know. But making mistakes is a part of DIY. Which, by the way, in Italian is fai da te. So it is Friday afternoon and I've just published the Harvest uh, episode and frankly I'm, I'm quite exhausted and I would like to just relax but we have to start the bathroom renovation and the first step is il primo passo qual è? Pulirlo accuratamente con l'acetone. Yeah, con l'acetone. So yeah, we've just got to clean the tiles first. Um, this is a lot bigger job than the kitchen renovation. Ciao! Good morning. 
So uh, Guido has just left, I'm just having another cafe and today I'm alone to uh, do all the stenciling which is a lot of work. Uh, it's also this super challenge because I've got to do the floors as well so I have to think about how to how to do it all and it has to be done sort of all within 24 hours because the, the resin that has to go on has to go on um, you know, within a certain time uh, that the, the white paint has gone down. Sorry, complicated, but anyway, uh, but I, I love a challenge. I love, I love, I don't know, you know, you know me by now, you know I love tedious work. I think so many of you are creative or artists of some kind, and it's so important, isn't it, to just change your medium every now and then, just just not as a full career change, but just, just every now and then to sort of like kickstarting your creative metabolism. Uh, for example, I, I'm always filming or editing or writing, and now just the prospect of working with my hands and doing the stenciling is so exciting to me. I woke up this morning like a little girl on Christmas, just thinking, oh, my, I'm so happy. And plus, I, I, I love um, the idea of just really pouring myself into something for 24 hours. So, uh, yeah, so for me, uh, the, the, the thought of doing this is, a little uh, <laughs> it's a lot of work but it's uh it's very it's very exciting to me i feel i feel so happy <laughs> also i've said this before but i love this feedback loop of of just kindness and beauty i've been sitting here sipping my coffee and uh it's saturday morning and i'm reading that your comments on the harvest episode and just so many of you appreciate exactly the same things that move me, that inspire me, that, that make me cry. And it's, uh, it's, just, it's just such a wonderful, oh my goodness, you put me in such a wonderful state of mind because now I go into today and I'm, I'm just so motivated and I think, oh, I can't wait to show them uh, you know, what I'm doing next and, 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 and get their, their thoughts on that and, 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 and sort of highlight the things that I know because or am I? By now, I feel like uh, I, I, I can get a really good sense of, of what resonates with you and it's still such a pleasure to, you know, find these details and continue the conversation. <laughs> this is the stencil. I searched everywhere in all the stores uh, in Florence and on Amazon and everything. I couldn't find anything that was 20 by 20, which is the size of the tiles. And then I found this little store um, that I had them s send it to me. They're just uh, um, in, in uh, near uh, Livorno, I think. Anyway, this time I got, knowing from last time in the kitchen, this time I got three of them so that then I can uh, uh, sort of work more efficiently. And the reason I chose this pattern is because it is the closest I could find to replicate this pattern here, which is in the, uh, which is like sort of a grate that's just built into the window and who knows how old it is, but it's in all of, all parts of this property is, um, anyway, I love it. We removed the window so that this could air more last night. So it's quite cold in here and ah, it looks like it came up well, I think. Yeah, it's quite nice, quite nice. Okay, so the Roman Empire rose to power. Did it actually make humans happier? Did it make them more miserable? If it had no noticeable effect on, say, average happiness in the world, what does it matter? It's, I even love that, I just love going into my own little head and ah, the repetitive movements and I've, it's just, um, like I look at this whole wall and all these walls around here and I think, oh, I can really get into a rhythm. I can really just, I don't know, lose myself in it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Everyone's different, but I, 
I feel like a lot of you seem to be like me in that you uh, you find a, a melodic sort of therapy in in these uh, in these repeated tasks, you know, these repeated movements. And also the fact that I'm alone, right? It's so peaceful. I'm just looking out of the winter here and I can just hear um, the birds and and uh, see the vineyards and I don't know, I really really like it. I think even though you know Guida's working um, in Marema, I think even if you're in a relationship, it's it's nice to have that time or I suppose it's actually a luxury. <laughs> Probably many people with with children would say this is that it's such a such a luxury then to still in, like enjoy the little times where you can just be on your own and and it allows you to sort of process everything whereas normally we're just sort of rushing from task to task and I don't I don't suppose we we process things or we reflect on them as 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 well as we should. Huh? Oh, oh. oh crow. Ah, nice. Oh, so excited. Difficulty is there's always a tiny bit of paint that comes up the side, so I have to pad it first so that then I don't put stain the new tile when I stick it on. This is why I bought the three this time learning from my last experience with the kitchen. All right, onward and upward. I'm trying not to stick. Can you see me? Am I still in the frame? Yes, I am. Uh, I'm trying not to <coughs> press the masking tape on too uh, hard because yeah, I'm, I'm worried it could strip off the, the, this, this base coat because you see the thing is, this type, I'm using a different brand of paint this time than I used in the kitchen, and um, it needs to have the resin go over it. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know, it's not exactly, it's not exactly ready yet to, to have something as, as challenging as masking tape be stuck onto it, so I don't want to pull it off. What I'm trying to do is what I did last time, is that within one stencil square, I'm doing some bits that are very, thick with paint and then other bits that are just like very very faded so that it kind of looks like they're older. <laughs> it's just so satisfying seeing something that you just know at a certain point you're going to be able to look back and you see it sort of taking shape slowly and... Pretty much everybody's anxious all the time. It's a rare human being who isn't anxious. That comes from an unexamined life. And you can examine it in multiple ways. You can examine it through, do a lot of meditation, sitting there with yourself and letting your mind run crazy and then seeing what's actually in your mind that your mind wants to tell you. It could be through therapy. Um, it could be through reading lots of philosophy and reflection and long walks. So there's many, many ways to tackle it. But it's that spending that time with yourself to examine why are you having these thoughts? Think about it this way. We spend so much time in our relationships, our relationship with our wives, our relationship with our colleagues, our relationship with our business partners, our relationship with our friends. The most important relationship you have is with yourself. It's with this voice in your head that is constantly rattling every waking hour. It's this crazy roommate living inside your mind who's always chattering, always chattering, never shuts up. And you can't control these thoughts. They just come up out of you don't even know where. That quality of those quality of your thoughts, that convers those conversations you're having in your head all the time, that is your world. That is the world you live in. Those that's the worldview you have. That's the lenses you see through, and that's going to determine the quality of your life more than anything else. And if you want to see what the quality of your life actually is, put down the drink, put down the computer, put down the smartphone, put down the book, put down the headphones, just sit by yourself doing nothing. And then you will know what the quality of your life actually is, because that's what you're always running away from. That's why people, when they try to meditate, they sit down like, I, I hate it. I can't sit still. Why? Because your mind is eating you alive. Your life is unexamined. <laughs>
It's amazing. You like it? Bello. When merit comes to be a governing philosophy, a way of determining access to opportunities, it has a dark side. If we had a perfect meritocracy, if we could one day overcome all of the obstacles that hold people back, the winners of the race would believe, understandably, that they deserved their winnings and that the losers deserved whatever place they wound up in. But a question, one question could be asked is, do we deserve in the first place the talents, the gifts that enable us to flourish in a, in a market society like ours? Or is having those talents a matter of good luck? I go back from my day in Marimma, and this is what I found. An amazing job with a crazy person attaching stencils everywhere. Define crazy. <laughs> <laughs> In a good way, obviously. Yeah. Send a kiss? To you? Yeah. No, to everybody. <laughs> I'm not a Victoria's Secret one, no, I'm already. No, I not really. Do, I don't do cheap you, you, kisses. No, but you look like a, you <laughs> dress like a Victoria's Secret. <laughs> okay. Ciao. Ma tu pensi veramente che ci sarà un, un altro lockdown? Ma da qui a aprile, secondo me, qualche momento in cui saremo un po' più chiusi ci sarà. Sì? Sì. Oh, Gary. Grazie, Mario. So, uh, extraordinary polymath, right? I mean, even though he was a world-class physicist, he was also an amateur physicist. Vision of some type or some type of true north. Um, we live in a in a world that loves to learn and to teach, and where people are, are students and educators. But when it comes to love, we don't like the concept of education. There's a key moment in the novel where one character makes a complaint against the other, and the wife, Kirsten, says, "I thought you loved me, and now there are all these things that seem to be wrong with me." And Rabbi, the uh, uh, husband, says. I do love you, but I want to improve you in certain areas. And she basically says, well, bugger off. Um, uh, you're supposed to love me for who I am. And both of them feel at different points that being loved for who one is, is the essence of love. And it's a very touching fantasy that's, of course, rooted in childhood, where as children, we were in many ways loved for everything that we were in all our tantrums and difficulties and peculiar habits and we look sometimes in adult love for a recreation of that but it's very tricky and i think unfair and we tend to respond so badly to anyone saying look i think this side of your character needs a bit of work this seems to be the opposite of love it seems to be a dictatorial bossy attitude but if we stand back from ourselves all of us should be learning things about ourselves. All of us need improvement. And relationships are in a way the crucible where improvement could take place, but rarely does because we feel so 
brittle and defensive and thin-skinned. And we feel that the person who's meant to love us shouldn't in any way have spotted anything about us that needs any kind of improvement, which is blessedly unrealistic. Thank you.